My friend Paul Doty asked me if I'd like to go work at the United States Arms Control and Disarmament Agency in Washington, D.C. I decided I would focus on biological weapons, so I went to Fort Detrick to see what we were doing with biological weapons, and I was given a tour by a quite good immunologist, Leroy Fothergill. And we came to a big building, seven stories high, and from a distance you would think it had windows, but when you get up close, they were phony windows. And I asked Dr. Father Gill, what do we do in there? And he said, well, we have a big fermenter in there and we make anthrax. And I said, well, why do we do that? He said, well, biological weapons are a lot cheaper than nuclear weapons. It will save us money. I don't think it took me very long to realize that, hey, we don't want devastating weapons of mass destruction to be real cheap and save us money. We would like them to be so expensive that no one can afford them but us, or maybe no one at all. It's ridiculous to want a weapon of mass destruction that's ultra cheap. The more I thought about it, two things motivated me very strongly, not just the illogic of it. One, it was my science, biology, that my science would be perverted in that way. But there's another aspect, and that is the difference between war and peace. Biological weapons, they could be responsible for a kind of war that's totally surreptitious. You don't even know it's happening, or you know it's happening, but it's always happening. So for those two reasons, my science and that it could erase the distinction between war and peace, could even change what it means to be human, I felt a strong philosophical desire to get this thing stopped. <laughs>